All right. I was actually putting this off because I uh, thought it was going to be super cold out here. But with the barn door open, it's pretty warm. So going to drain the chain case off is the plan here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'd like to, well, I don't, I don't really want to, but I should uh, change out the bearings in the, I don't, I don't really know. I think it's jack shaft is the one up here. And then I guess drive shaft is the bottom one. Um, anyway, change the bearings out in the two shafts. Um, yeah. All right. One thing I've learned is these things usually, usually these bolts do not need to be very tight and I'm feeling that taking this off. I feel like it was probably, these bolts are probably put on at a shop and they are nice and loose and I think that's what they are supposed to be. Interesting. One thing I see Polaris fixed on this model that was a problem on a different Polaris I worked on is the bottom of the chain case cover. So, I mean, these things are plastic and it's still plastic, which I'm not totally opposed to. The only problem is there's no bolt in the center bottom. So it would tend to leak from there. And I actually had a case where a machine leaked all of its oil over the course of hundred miles and stretched the chain out to the point where it could not be adjusted. And, uh, you know, we were able to limp it back, but that's a pretty big deal, pretty big problem. Um, so it looks like they put a bracket a steel bracket on the bottom to help compress the bottom um, where they can't get a bolt in because of the design. So that's good to see. Okay, so real nasty oil has not been changed in a very long time. Um, that's not good to see. I don't like that. Man, it's funny, the rest of the machine Looked pretty happy, but that, that is not, that is not happy. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's too bad. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's, uh, not uncommon to see, obviously. We'll get this cotter pin out. So I'll get that out and try to get these nuts off. Yeah. That way I can use the brake to my advantage. All right, got some uh, needle nose pliers and see if we can get this out in a nice, easy fashion. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'd like to save this. I think I can because I don't have any good quality cotter pins right now. I need to pick up a box of those. I got some Harbor Freight ones and those suckers are not great. All right. Um, so I'm going to apply the parking brake and hopefully that's enough pressure. Should be, I think that'll be enough. Um, I'll probably use, let's see, I'll use the impact. So it's uh 15 sixteenths. I don't know. Does that fit better than a 24? does. And a 23 definitely doesn't fit. No, that, that's so bizarre. I don't know why. Polaris, why do you guys, I'm sure you don't do it anymore, hopefully, but I don't know. I find just the occasional standard size bolt in here. It's kind of weird. Uh, we'll see if we can fire it off with the small battery impact. Uh, we'll set it to kill. No problem. All right, I'm gonna leave it on a little bit. That one, 
Um, hmm. Would this be able to get it? No. Well, maybe with a shorter. Let's see. Okay, it's 14. Uh, will this fit? I don't know. Let's see. That'll fit. It's gonna be an uh, open wrench kind of deal. Uh, yep, open wrench. Okay. Okay, so 14 mil on the bottom, big fat washer on there. They're both gonna have that. Imagine this is a locking, looks like a locking nut. Also had a cotter pin, big fat washer. Okay. Now, let's see. Okay, so the adjustment Nut is a 14. The jam nut, I imagine, must be a 15. So we'll back that off, back off the jam nut. And, okay. Oh, I wanted to see, let's see, it was about here. It was fairly loose. Yeah, it was fairly loose, um, which is not surprising. Nobody's been in here for a while. Okay. I think this will just come right off, yep. We'll clean that up, get all the metal crap off it. I imagine it's, all these parts are covered in metal debris. And what does this have? This is a, God, so much crap on it, I can barely see it. 22 to, 22 for the top. I'll have to check. I'm guessing this is probably just stock gearing. I might make it a little more aggressive than a 22. Um, if I can, I'll have to look into, you know, whether I can get away with the stock chain doing that. And bottom is a 39. So 39, 22. Um, you should change your gear oil every season. It's good practice. So yeah, this is actually some of the worst I've personally seen. I mean, I haven't done a ton of these, but pretty nasty. I'll blast it with some uh, brake parts cleaner. Man, the sun is quickly on its way down. Uh, probably want to bring that heater I have out here. Let's see. I think we're going to close up the door. That sun starts going down in the winter. It cools off fast. Okay. A bit darker, but... Um, let's see, close the door on the other side of the shop too. And let's see, I have a light somewhere. No big surprise that I can't find anything in here. I don't know if it's in my heated shop. Mm. Oh, I think it's in my basement doorway.
Well, I don't know where that light got to. Anyway, so it looks like there's a snap ring up here. Um, so I'll need to get my snap ring pliers, or I don't know, sometimes I'll just stick these on. Nah, I need snap ring pliers. And then uh, there's a retainer, three bolts on the other side. Uh, so let me see if I can get that retainer. Um, looks like uh, maybe a 15 or 14. Nope, maybe 13. Man, Polaris, come on. What are we doing with all the different sizes here? That's something that skidoos do better. It's not having a million different sizes for everything. I don't know why I didn't grab my power ratchet to do this. Where is that thing? Whatever. No, I own that for a reason. If you think about how much time you save on every single bolt using one of these, if you can, it'll fit. So much time. I'll set these here for now. It's funny when I bought, actually this tool came free with something else and uh, honestly didn't really think I'd use it a whole lot, but I think I use it more than, it came with a uh, big impact and I use this way more. Okay. So there's a retainer on back side, both sides it looks like. Okay. So that's out. And we get some snap ring pliers from the shop. Wow, it's nice in here. It's gotta be like 70 in here. Where did I put them? Oh, I moved them here, okay. I think these ones will work. I've been having a hard time, I'm having a hard time getting good snappering pliers and I've tried to get good ones you know it's trying not to cheap out like I got these channel lock ones and they're built nice but they just uh I don't know like the bits don't fit and everything and they bend and I don't know I'm not sure this is the right size no it is okay problem with these ones is they don't get I don't know it seems like they don't get tight enough like the uh, the bits on the end bend a little bit so you can't so you gotta use a screwdriver once you get it to pop it up out Safety glasses activity that I'm not using safety glasses on. Um, I hope I don't have to. Just occurred to me I might. I don't know if I need to do something with this brake rotor or not. I don't know. Okay, snap ring, uh, kit comes with a new one. I got an all balls kit. Okay, those are 14 and 14. And they have a big thick flat washer and a lock washer.
이렇게 and I think if I bust this one free I should be able to just rotate it Spacer back for the caliper. Why is that not just coming out? Okay, I guess. Hmm. How's our caliper? Looks like it's been sitting in one spot for a long time. Indent of the pad there. Otherwise, it's pretty good. I mean, caliper, rotor. Um, so there is this spacer on the back side, and this bearing feels fine. Doesn't surprise me that the bearing on the um, Chain case side would feel okay. Okay, got a stack of oily rags going here. Um, I just burn them, you know? I know they won't catch on fire if they're already on fire. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that seemed real loose. I mean, the track is also really loose. So, around the other side. All right. Yeah, there's one more. Wow. A lot of nuts on this thing. has not been greased <laughs> like ever <laughs> so that's stupid the grease fitting might as well use it I think this is a rolling on the ground sort of thing here let's see oh, this looks like a royal pain in the butt is what it looks like This point, 
probably just drop the skid out. Stop fighting this thing so much. Kind of needs to come out anyway. Because I got a bunch of bad bogeys. It'd be a lot easier to work on if it was out. Might as well. It's the last thing I haven't taken. I haven't taken off of this thing. I think it's just like four bolts. So. Right, let's see. in case so those bearings are fine but Sure. Oh. 
Well, the track's out. I mean, not much more I could take out of this thing now. Ugh. Ow. Okay, here's the drive shaft. Whew. Holy crap. <clears throat> Now, I mean, let's see. I guess haul the skid into my heated shop. Um, start looking at those bogies because those are smoked. I'm glad I took it out so I get a pretty clear look at it. Um, you know, a little bit of play in that one. This one is gone. These two were totally smoked. Um, I replaced the bearings of these two already. Um, but I went ahead and just ordered a bunch of bearings. Um, surprisingly, I don't know, the, these two here seem totally fine. I'm not sure why, but there's barely any play and they move nice and smooth. So I mean, those ones are harder to get to, so I'll just leave them. Um, I guess they don't take much abuse in that position. I don't know. Um, and the rear ones, I already took this as the rear, you know, for the rear axle. Um, fortunately the actual bogies are in good shape. Um, the center one's totally fine, the outside ones are smoked. Alright, so basically here's what's going on. Uh, you got your bogey, you got a snap ring, um, in there. This one's in pretty good shape. This is the one I got in the mail. Uh, it, I mean, it needs a bearing for sure, though. It's like totally seized up. So I put some, I just put some three in one oil, whatever, some sort of lube. I just like this because it's not an aerosol. Um, and then uh, it, it's not probably a real good like penetrating oil, which is probably actually what I want. But I mean, it says it's penetrating oil. But anyway, uh, I just put a little on each side uh, because they do kind of, uh, you know, even though it's plastic in there, um, it kind of sees up in there, but you know, mainly the thing is the, uh, the snap ring gets uh, seized up in there. So uh, we'll see how this one is. It doesn't look super corroded, so hopefully it moves. Um, uh, we'll see. So the back side of the snap ring is stuck. So just kind of work it. It's pretty much, I rarely had any that weren't stuck at all. I mean, I don't know. I'm also just dealing with old junk, so. Um, there we go. All right, and obviously try not to shoot yourself in the face. Not a bad idea to have safety glasses on if you take one of these to the eye. Yeah, that would suck. Um, so, okay, yeah, so snap ring's out. Um, so there's just obviously a groove that snap ring uh, is retained by. And then I just grab a um, socket that fits, and you know, this old bearing is toast, so uh, I don't mind beating it out. So 22 happens to fit pretty good in there. Um, grab a hammer. So, just give it a good whack. It usually just pops right out. Uh, another thing sometimes, uh, yeah. Throw it on top of some duct tape. Uh, I'll dampen it a little bit. And uh, also just give you know, the bearing somewhere to go. Rusty, rusty, nasty bearing. Won't spin at all. A little bit of play back and forth, but it's funny. It, it's not in terrible shape, but it must have been sitting for a long time or something. Um, so, 
you know, uh... Oh, knock my oil over. Nice. Mm. Right. I'll soak up some of that oil, actually. And, uh... Use it to just, uh... You know, you want to wipe this up a little bit. Get some of the grime out of there. Um... You don't really want... You know, you don't want this super looped up. You you want it to press in. It's already plastic, so it doesn't need any more help. Uh, they usually just slide in pretty pretty easy. So back on a little roll of duct tape, get your bearing, and uh, I mean, you know, you want to be careful about bashing on a bearing, obviously. But I just kind of give it some gentle taps to get it lined up here. Yeah, I'm not beating the crap out of it. Okay. That's in somewhat There we go. Somewhat level. And then uh, I found the 30 socket lines up with the outer race. Um, and you just want to you, know, you don't want to go too far, but if you can still see gap on the other side, you're not quite there yet, and you need the gap on this side to put your snap ring into. Now <laughs> the 30 socket actually a little bit uh, fits a little too good. It's stuck in there. I think it's pretty much perfect, but so yeah. Uh, it could go a little bit more, it's not quite home. Yep, that's home. No, uh, you know, no, no damage to the bearing as long as you're using the outer race to drive it in. It's gonna be totally fine. Um, yep. So that's that. And clean up the snap ring a little bit here. Yeah. You know, oh man. You put the freaking cap on my oil and keep dumping it. All right. Um, yeah. Anyway. Clean up your snap ring. Um, oh, something also, um, let me grab a pick. Yeah, take a pick and small pick and run it in this groove just in case you got any grime in there. I mean, this one actually looked relatively clean. Uh, eh, it's still, it's not gonna focus. Whatever, there's, there's a tiny bit of grime in there, so. Uh, you know, that'll stop your snap ring from popping in uh, fully seating. So you want to get as much crap out of there as you can so the snap ring will seat as good as it can. And then, uh, you know, it's just as simple as dropping the snap ring back in. So, you know, good set of snap ring pliers. These are okay. I don't know if I've complained about them before, but they work They work good for most things. Um, use the channel locks. Um, you know, with the adjustable tip. I, you know, obviously, I guess what I found is I need to pick up a set of uh, snap ring pliers that are just solid, um, that don't have like adjustable tips and all that junk. But anyway, there you go, there it is. So really, once you get the old bearing out, that's the, can be the biggest battle. That one went pretty well, so. Uh, I've got like, I don't know, five more to go. Just got this new bearing puller. Um, 
So I'm pretty excited to try this out. Um, I'm gonna pull the bearing off the shaft here. And I don't know, probably in the past I would've just whacked it with a hammer or something stupid. Um, or, you know, tried to drive it down through something like a vise or something like that. I don't know, but you know, uh, it's kind of nice to use the right tools. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Uh, so I'm gonna get this set up. I've never used one of these, a split bearing puller. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I, this guy here, let's see, I'll be quiet for a second and kind of hear, you know, a little bit of uh, noise in there. So yeah, it, uh, and then also, um, just a small amount of play, but yeah, I mean, it was time to replace it. It was a good time, good time to do it. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, get this set up and see how it goes. Okay. So. This is just position this on here. Um, I'm thinking, of course, I'm not going to read any instructions or watch how to do it. I'm just going to do it. Um, I'm thinking this doesn't need to be crazy tight. Uh, I don't necessarily want to scar the shaft. And then, so this guy is going on top here. Got is going to be um, just want to make sure this isn't going to run down into my threads mm. it actually like it does fit into that hole um, so there's no this kit didn't come with different ends um, if I just have a washer on there I don't know how tight this bearing is going to be to pull. I'm gonna try just stacking a couple washers. That looks about right. Take this off. I could just throw the impact on this, I suppose. Might be the thing to do, I don't know. Let's see, we'll try the baby. Little guy. This worked good though. Um, you know, this was an Amazon deal. I think it was like 40 bucks. So definitely made, you yeah, know, especially now that I know how to set it up and use it, it took me, you know, just a minute to figure that out. So um, yeah, it's nice to have a tool that does it right. OK. 
Okay. So the kit came with uh, a couple different bearings. And this one here um, has a bit of a taper to it. So that's going to be the matching bearing. The one that goes into the chain case uh, housing or whatever, um, well, just chain case, I guess, is flat. Well, it has slight taper on the outside edge, but it's basically a flat bearing. So um, this is the one we want for this. So now that we've got it off there, I mean, I guess you can't really hear anything, but it feels, feels like garbage anyway. It's just kind of chunky feeling in there. Um, probably would have gone a while without actually totally failing, but this is super smooth. I did see that the old bearing was made in Japan. Um, I was just gonna look real quick. Oh, slid on nice and easy. I thought it would slide right back off, but apparently not. I was curious if this said, I'm sure it's China, but you know, oh, it feels pretty good though. Um, curious where these ones were made. Um, China, yeah. All balls. Uh, so this is the kit that I got. It has both bearings, both ends of the shaft. It's uh, part number, the all ball, well, I don't know, AB141005. Hold that a little longer. That's the ticket. Got it caught up on here a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I need to find something to send this home. So, I'll look and see if I have a piece of pipe. I'm almost there. I don't know if it's gonna take me all the way. This one will be a lot easier to put back on too. Um, cool. Yeah, that was no no big deal. Um, stinky grease. Hmm. Cool. I'm really happy I bought this bearing puller set. It's definitely. I feel like forty bucks. Yeah, it already paid for itself in my opinion. Right now, I don't think anybody would have done this job. You know, even if I just handed the parts over for less than 40 bucks. So, man. Okay, this bearing is smoked. There's a ton of play in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, not crazy bad, but... You know. She's got the noise. Feeling like we're home. Yep. Still feels great. We're flush on the top. Cool, that one was easy. So, uh, yeah, the one for the track is pretty easy. And honestly, this is the one that was worn out more. Well, this is the one, if you're gonna replace one, it's probably gonna be, I yeah, which makes sense. I mean, yeah, the track, the, the one on, you know attached to the track is gonna get a lot more abuse um, than the one that's just uh, 
you know, got a chain and the belt attached to it in the PTO side, you know. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, clean this up. The only reason I'm doing, showing all of this as much as I can is just because I wanted it, you know, when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to see, even if somebody's not totally doing everything perfect, I don't know, it's just nice to see kind of the insides of everything and what I'm getting into. Um, gives me a good idea of, uh, you know, what the job's going to be like, even if I'm watching some idiot like me do it. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is, these are the other two bearings. Um, so let's see if I got this right. Yeah. So this, this is going to be, you know, where your, um, your, I guess basically drive shaft. And I guess this one's the jack shaft. Um, you know, you're going to have a, a rubber seal on both of these. So I'll just pop the seal out and, um, you know, just, I'm just going to, whack these bearings out and pop the other ones in. I don't think this one's going to be uh, incredibly complicated. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it, even though you know, I'm just kind of rambling on sometimes, monotone, whatever, um, freaking exhausted. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm doing, but I totally, you know, appreciate you watching. And yeah, subscribe to the channel. I'm, I'm really trying to get this thing monetized, you know, um, and it'll, it'll, it'll make it so that, you know, um, I'll be motivated to do better camera work and, uh, you know, edit the videos a little better and do some better intros and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, if you're not making any money on it, it's kind of just like pain in the butt, you know, cause you gotta move the camera around and it's just this whole extra step. It, it really sucks and it takes a lot of adjusting and uh, I guess I'll, while I'm rambling on here, uh, adjusting, getting used to and, and uh, anyway, so I seriously, like legitimately really do appreciate anybody watching this and um yeah seriously like please subscribe to the channel like even if you don't watch my videos like I, you have to have a thousand subscribers to to make it um you know so you can monetize your videos on youtube so just you know it seriously would help me out um so i appreciate it thanks guys take care